Hello everyone. So today's video is titled to adapt or not to adapt. All right. So we would like to control a system, which is a scalar system. Here is the uncertainty and here is the control signal. I would like to explain things in this simple manner. Um, in the previous video, basically, I was talking about the differences between robust control versus adaptive control. I believe before we uh, proceed further, we need to understand whether we should use a fixed gain control law, like robust control law, versus an adaptive control law. And we need to understand the main benefits of an adaptive control law or to adapt principle in this simple context so that in the following videos we can generalize them to um, um, higher order systems. All right, so first I would like to start with not to adapt. I prefer not to use an um, adaptive control law and no learning mechanism, and I would like to use a fixed gain robust like an adaptive, uh, robust like and control law. The first question, what do we need to know? You are going to see from the analysis that we, for this case, when we use a fixed gain control law, such as u equals to minus kx, and k here is a positive constant, um, we need to know an upper bound of the unknown term. In this case, since this is a scalar example, you only have one upper, you know, one unknown term, w, which is a scalar. Um, since it is unknown, we need to know it is upper bound, which is a positive constant. All right, so um, when you apply this fixed gain control law to this um, uncertain system, you end up having this um, closed loop system, right? I just inserted minus kx to here. And to analyze this, <coughs> simple system you can use a range of tools i am going to use a lipono stability um, context so i consider this positive definite lipono function candidate and i am going to take its derivative which is x x dot now x dot i am inserting this which we have this now I am expanding these terms. This is the first term, w unknown, x to the power of 2, minus k, x to the power of 2. Now, right, I cannot choose k to be greater than w because in reality I, know, I don't know w. For example, think of w as an unknown mass. Um, uh, it may be different for different applications. So you all, you know, so it can be five kilograms, six kilograms. You don't know it, but you know that whatever happens, it won't exceed 10 kilograms. So you need to work with its upper bound, not with the actual W itself. For this purpose, I am upper bounding this term. So this term is upper bounded by its absolute value. You can basically find an upper bound. You can distribute the absolute value like this. So this, this guy's absolute value is W bar that we need to know to design a fixed gain control law. And X to the power of two, it is a already positive, so I remove the absolute value. So now, when you, instead of this term, when you use it as upper bound to, con, you know, to continue the Lipon of stability analysis, you have W bar X to the power of two minus X K, K, x to the power of 2. So you can combine all terms here to conclude that our V dot is negative definite, uh, basically for asymptotic stability. You need to have K to be greater than W bar. So if you are designing a fixed gain control law and you know uh, robust controller, controllers are a special case of it, for this very simple system, you need to know something about the uncertainty. It is upper bound. So as long as you choose your um, robust control gain K to be any constant, fixed constant that is larger than W bar, you are going to guarantee asymptotic stability. All right, this is what happens if you choose not to adapt. Now let's use adaptive control and let's visit the to adapt principle. And 
Here you are going to see the simplest adaptive control architecture for the first time, if you are seeing for the first time. All right, now I am going to estimate um, the uncertainty. So I am going to use, instead of a fixed gain um, control law, I am going to use minus W hat X. And here, this is an adaptive control law because W hat is updated according to this parameter update law. It is structure will come from the basically I derived from the Lipono analysis and you are going to learn in this um, adaptive control and learning series how to come up with this more in detail. But I don't want to dive you know into a lot of details in order not to exhaust you at the very beginning of this series. So here gamma is the uh, learning rate basically it is a positive constant. It can be any positive constant ranging from 0 0.001 to uh, 100, 1000, depending on your processor's requirements. And the key thing about adaptive control, you don't need to know anything about W. Okay, so in robust control, you need to know the upper bound on the uncertainty. Here with adaptive control, you don't need to know anything. You are going to see this in the following analysis. So <clears throat> this is your very first adaptive control law. This is the parameter update law that updates W hat here. This is the differential equation for W hat. And since you don't know uncertainty, often the initial condition for W hat, basically uh, you can choose it as zero. Um, and here is the learning rate. Okay, when you close the loop, now when you take this control signal, insert our uncertain system, you are going to have this uh, Wx minus W hat x, but your closed loop system now has one more member, which is W hat dot. So these two differential equations together represents the closed loop behavior. And hence, in your Lyapunov of analysis, you need to consider both terms together. Um, I am going to start with the first term, similar to the not to adapt uh, Lyapunov uh, function candidate. 1 over 2, x to the power of 2, positive definite. Now I am going to add another term, which is mu minus w hat. You are going to see mu in a second. <clears throat> and here we have 1 over gamma. You are going to see to cancel out some terms. Um, the reason I have mu here is uh, because of the fact that if I only include w hat here, um, we know w hat uh, will grow or you know will converge. Uh, it may converge to something. So when you construct Lyapunov functions, you would like to cons uh, cons construct them based on the terms that you would like to finish. In this case, you want to drive x to zero, and w hat will go to some. Uh, we may go to some uh, parameter if it happens. So I don't want to consider W hat uh, here by itself because I know it won't stay at zero. It is not necessarily going to zero. So I am going to consider this error-like update signal. And this is always the case. You are going to learn more in detail in the follow-up videos. All right, let's take it as a uh, time derivative. First of all, x, x dot. Here, I inserted this term here. And for the second term, basically, if you take its derivative, right, it is time derivative is nothing but 1 over gamma mu dot minus w hat dot multiplied by mu w hat. Or you can put, put this term first and the second term here. Note that mu dot is some constant, so it is 0. So we end up having minus this term. So that's how I arrive. You can pause the video and look at the highlights. Now, first thing you are going to see, this term will cancel out with this gamma term. 1 over gamma and gamma cancels with each other. That's why if you put a positive learning rate here, you put its inverse always to the second term when you construct adaptive control, uh, Lyapunov functions for adaptive control, to analyze adaptive control systems. All right, so you expand the rest of the terms. This is the expansion of these two terms. And for the expansion of the second term, these are here. You are going to see this term will cancel out with this term. You end up having this and this. 
So you have w x to the power of 2 minus mu x to the power of 2. Now, without loss of any generality, I am letting mu to be w plus delta. Look, you are not going to... This is not a part of your control algorithm. It is a part of the analysis. So this is not an assumption. This is just, well, you know, um, this does not require the knowledge of W, okay? Since W is finite, meaning that it is less than infinity, there always exists delta such that this selection holds. So this is kind of an existing existence condition for the analysis. It is not a part of control design. So I am not going to make any, I am not making any assumption on the knowledge of W or its upper bound. So for the sake of the analysis, I am letting this to be like that. In this case, you know, if you insert this mu here, the first term basically cancel out with w, so you end up having minus delta x to the power of 2. Now, we cannot say here this is less than 0. So this doesn't give you asymptotic stability, okay? We need to think what's going on here. Um, you start with two terms in the Lyapunov function, x and this term. So since you started with two terms and you only have one of the terms, meaning that you don't have another term like uh, mu minus w head to the power of two multiplied by some constant, the best you can say is this is less than or equal to zero because you don't know what's going on with regard to this. So basically my point is from this analysis, since you have this, you only have Lyapunov stability. Not the asymptotic stability, but Lyapunov stability for this pair, for these two signals that you construct the Lyapunov function candidate at the first place like this. All right, if you want to learn more about this, you can go to the advanced control system series and watch uh, Lyapunov stability and more. This, this was one of the prerequisites that I mentioned in the previous video. All right, now, good news is we can still do more than Lyapunov stability. Um, at the high level, what uh, Lyapunov stability means is that these signals remain bonded. X will remain bonded. Um, mu minus W hat remain bonded, so they won't diverge to infinity. That's good. But if you recall Barbalas Lemma, once again, uh, from the Lyapunov stability and more video, we have the following fact. If V dot dot is bonded, then V dot going to zero as T goes to infinity. Now let's apply this to this Lyapunov derivative. We are finding its second derivative. So when you take V dot dot, you going you are going to have you know minus delta two x x dot. I am going to insert x dot here basically like this. Now looking at this term. These are constants, so they are obviously bonded. X is bonded, X is bonded, X is bonded. Why? Because of the Lyapunov stability of X. W is a constant and hence bonded. And W hat is also bonded because mu minus W hat bonded. This is a constant, so this will remain bonded. Meaning that all the terms on the right-hand side of V dot dot are bonded based on the Lyapunov stability result that we established seconds ago on this analysis. So since left side includes bounded terms, V dot dot must be bounded that we satisfy this Barbalas, condi Barbalas Lemas condition. So V dot going to zero, but what is our V dot? V dot going to zero, so this term must go to zero. This is a constant, so Delta x to the power of 2 must go to 0, or x to the power of 2 must go to 0, or x needs to uh, go to 0. So we just proved that by uh, Lyapunov stability theory plus the help from Barbalas lemma, x of t asymptotically converges to 0, similar to the case that we established uh, fixed gain control or not to adapt case. Um, however, the big distinction, once again, between these two cases is that in the first one that you, when you design a fixed gain control architecture, you need to know uh, an upper bound 
on the uncertainty w bar in order to properly choose this gain k. So this was an assumption, This you need to assume this to proceed further. If you don't know any upper bound on this uncertainty, you cannot implement, you cannot design this fixed gain or case a not to adapt control law. Um, in the to adapt case, basically we implemented this um, adaptive control law and um, we don't have any assumptions, right? To implement gamma, as I mentioned, can be any positive constant, 0 0.01 to whatever you would like to choose, depending on your processor. And um, so to adapt in this case shows that adaptive control, you know, is more capable in the sense of uh, making no assumption with regard to the, this uncertainty. I hope this find, uh, you find this video helpful. Um, let me know in the comments if you like it, if you have any questions and we can go from there. If you like, subscribe.